Hi, Mike Polonzi, back with another episode of Safe and Sound. I'm Bev Cam. Very excited today. I have a special guest, Todd Crane. He's the owner of <clears throat> Kettle Cove Catering in Manchester by the Sea. And we're going to talk about food safety. Um, you know, summertime, we're all having cookouts, barbecues, we're going to the beach. <clears throat> we're uh, hanging out with our friends outside, having a lot of food, we're cooking a lot of food. But are we doing it safely? Are we doing it correctly? So we're going to talk about how not to get sick at our cookouts, picnics, wherever we are. And uh, I brought some food in today. The staples of what we all have, potato salad, macaroni salad, uh, potato salad. And we're going to talk about how long you leave it out for, any preparation. I know when I've been over to your house, you had this whole array of food. And I know you have a lot of stuff going that I didn't really pay attention to until we talked last night. But uh, Todd, <clears throat> let's start with the staples. Mayonnaise products. I come over, you have everything set up. Is that when you start the clock? Like you start timing? Well, well, what's your prep on that? What we try to do is we try to cook <clears throat> the potatoes first, let them cool down a little bit for potato salad. Cook the eggs, obviously let them cool down before you add the mayonnaise. Chicken, <clears throat> try to let that settle down before you add mayonnaise. We let that cool down. Once it cools down, I even like to put it in the fridge for a few minutes. Then we chop up the potatoes, chop up the eggs, and then we slice up the chicken. As you add the mayonnaise, mustard, or whatever it is that you like to do, you try to want to be aware of what's going on in your surroundings so that you're in a clean station, a clean spoon, clean bowl. Mayonnaise sitting out for a long time, obviously, is, is just not the right thing to do. So <clears throat> what we try to do is make sure that everything is clean and your station is, 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 is big enough to do what we need to do. <clears throat> and we'll talk about the, uh, the cross-contamination, which we talked about earlier, later on. But so when you say don't leave it out too long, what, what is too long? What, what do you gauge? You know, so I know. I use common sense. <clears throat> um, when we're cooking, we cook the, the chicken. You just mentioned cross-contamination. We cook the chicken, we slice it up. We put it in an open tray, let it cool down a little bit, not to room temperature, but let it get the steam off it, throw it back in the fridge, wash the tray, wash the knife, get everything nice and clean. <clears throat> put that aside. When it comes back out, you have a fresh bowl. You add the mayonnaise, chopped celery, uh, scallions, if that's what you want to put in, the mayonnaise, you mix it up. Then you put it back into the fridge. Time and temperature, as you're preparing food, is difficult to do in and out. However, once the food is out, is that's where the danger comes. I don't ever have food out for more than two hours. I'm a caterer, so I, my food's always rotating. But at cookouts, you know, Winston and Millie bring their, their food. It's in a big bowl. And they want to sit it out on the table for, you know, an hour and a half, two, two and a half hours. I don't recommend that. I recommend that when they come with the food, that they scoop it into smaller bowls, put it in an ice bath and put it on the, on, on the serving table so that you're always rotating food and clean, keeping everything clean. Plus, we don't know how long Millie's had that food in the car. On well, the way, on the I, th that's another thing, too. I mean, <clears throat> where we, we potluck dinners now long, are, are no longer really the norm. When we grew up, we had potluck suppers all the time. Sure. But because nobody knows who's done something behind closed doors, you get to the point now where it's not just the Board of Health, it's not, it's, it's nobody knows. Like you said, well, I'm just going into the, grab a couple things, I'm gonna grab some Coca-Cola, I'm gonna grab some things at the supermarket, <laughs> and the potato salad, chicken salad, or egg salad sitting out in the car for half an hour, 45 minutes in the sun. That, that's just, that's just wrong. <laughs> so. Really what it comes down to is, is, is and, and you and I have talked about this the last couple of days, is common sense. If you're not sure, don't do it. Smaller bowls. Explain the ice, explain the ice pack that so you do. If someone shows up with five pounds of potato salad and it's in a big bowl like this, what I do is I grab a, a smaller bowl, well, catering, I do my own, but I get a smaller bowl, pack it with ice, and use a smaller bowl to put the potato salad in. So it's sitting in an ice, what we call an ice bath. You bring it out, you serve it. As that starts to melt or it's beginning to get empty, you bring that back into the kitchen and replace it. 
And if there's no <clears throat> room in the refrigerator, if there's no room in a shaded area, you want to cover it and put ice in a, in a bigger bowl as well. So what happens is it's not one or two things. You're always thinking three or four things down the road so that the food isn't left out. <clears throat> left out, there's a rule that says two hours. I, I, my food's in and out in half an hour, 45 minutes, my, because right, I'm exactly. aware of it, I'm a caterer. But sure, but it's like I, a, when we're at, in the backyard. Correct. Two hours is good. Two hours doesn't even think about it. Two hours is gone. You're, you're, you're entertaining friends, you're entertaining people, so... There's just an issue. A few beers. Time exactly goes by. Let's go play some football. Exactly correct. All this food is out. We come back, and the food's been sitting there for the next thing you know, so, three, four hours, and no one's paying attention to if it. If you take the eight pounds of potato salad and <clears throat> cut it into two pounds, on a, you'll know that it's empty. That means someone has to go in and replenish it, bring it back out. So that's <clears throat> just a, a nice rule of thumb to not put all the food out at, all, at, at once so that as it disperses, you can replace and you'll keep it cold in the fridge and out of the sun. Also, whenever you can, a tent, an umbrella to cover the food, even in heat, to cover the food so that the sun's not beating down on it. The sun will bake the food if you can keep it in the shade with a tent or an umbrella, it's just awesome. That's awesome. We should make some food tents and just <laughs> you know, put them out there. <clears throat> That's not even talking, I mean, we have, we have you know, mesh uh, covers for pies and for cakes and for breads and stuff like that, so to keep the flies off. It, but we really, flies and really you want something to cover cover the food. So nice. So we covered what has mayonnaise and other things, yeah, I think but we haven't talked about cold cuts. You know, everyone yeah. has the cold cut. Wait, the cheese, the cold cuts and the cheese, the cheese plate that's out there. So again, you're gonna bring, you're gonna go down, you're gonna buy the big block. Uh, of cheese, and everyone's slicing it up, and everyone's doing what they want to it. As soon as that cheese starts to sweat, it starts to get stiffer, it gets harder. <clears throat> you want to just keep rotating your plates in and out so that your cheese and cracker plates, the cheese doesn't get stale. And again, rotating is, is just the way to go. And as far as cold cuts, you can see when the, when the, when the, the, when the meats are sweating from the heat, yeah you know that that's probably not a great idea, and I wouldn't put anything out for more than an hour. I, mean, I know people have antipasta plats, and again, ice baths and antipasta um, salad or something like that. Well, I was gonna say, what about the salad? Yeah, I mean, salad, ice bath as ice well. There's, there's, the just, there's no, no reason not to, no reason not to, so. Okay. <clears throat> now we have to cook the food. Yeah. We, we've gotten them, right, the, well, the, the meat. The meat, the chicken, the hamburger, right? So okay. you have 50 people at your, at your cookout, and or you're expecting 50 people, and there's only 10 there. Uh, don't cook 50 hamburgers, 50 pieces of chicken, 50 hot dogs. <clears throat> cook for who is there, almost as an order. You don't want food sitting around. It's just, it's, I use, it, I use the, the term simple, stupid, and common sense. If there's 10 people there, and seven of them want hamburgers, three of them want hot dogs, cook the hamburgers and hot dogs. And I'll tell you, for anybody who's doing something at home or anybody's doing something, you are gonna be the entertainer. People will come to you. You don't have to cook everything in an hour and leave the grill. People are gonna come say hi to you at the grill. They're gonna bring you a beverage, they're gonna bring you a water, and all your friends are gonna come to you at the grill. So the food is better when it's hot off the grill, not sitting around for a long time. So. Again, 50 ham you have expecting 50 guests, you have 50 hamburgers, and there's 10 there, 10 hamburgers, 10 hot dogs. See, I don't have 50 people in my cookouts. You actually have 50 <laughs> people at your cookouts. I, I no, come to your cookouts. So we, 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 do them for the, we do them for the Masonic Hall. <clears throat> and we have steaks and hot dogs and everything else. And it, it, it's, it's, it's not theater, it's not anything. It's just what it is, it's organization so that people get their food hot. We have, we have times where it might be raining, it might be doing something, we'll get the steaks out before the lobsters so that people don't have to wait for the meat to sit for 20 minutes while the line's going through, you know, in certain situations. So, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> tell the people about the flame. What do we do? And I do it too. And no, my I, wife will tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and flame, you know, like, if I have, she, she 
Because, Mike, we have two burgers, you have four burners going. Like, what, what are you doing so, over there? So, so, about the flame. You don't have to go low and slow, but you do not have to put a burner on and rip, rip <laughs> chicken, a hamburger, a piece of steak in a, in a, in, on, on, the, on the cooktop. Low and slow, really, the food tastes better. It doesn't spray all over the place. And this is just really a preference thing. Um, when you're home, you don't have to burn the outside of the chicken so the inside's not cooked. Low and slow, and it'll How cook. How much time does that actually add? Because you say it only adds like a few minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. I mean, you're, you're not talking. You put a piece of chicken and you put it up high, and you burn the outside, the inside's not cooked. Then you put it on medium. Let us see. You're talking five minutes. You're not talking anything. You're not talking a 15 minute difference. You're talking five minutes, you know, for two or three hamburgers, two or three pieces of chicken, fish, everything else. I go into people's houses. I see the flame and the flames coming around the, 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 the <coughs> skillet. And I'm like, you know, you can. He goes, no, you know, and then the smell of the burned food through the house also is lower the flame, less of the smell, less of the burn, less of the oil, less of everything. And I believe your food tastes better. I didn't know about the smell. Lower the flame, lower the smell. Yeah. Uh, I don't that's, know if that's, that's entirely true, but when you put your flame up and you put hamburgers up high, you can smell the hamburgers for an hour after you cook unless you have a great ventilation system. You cook fish in your house and you turn it up high. Burnt fish, to me, is one of the, it's, it's horrid, horrid smell. So, yeah, I recommend low and slow. All right. And while we're on the subject of food and flame, you were nice enough to send us a chat, recommended. Yeah. Um, this will be up. Tell me about the temperature shot. So I know it says ground meat, and I know these kind of high on the high side, more well done. But it's really, this shot is, correct me if I'm wrong, to make sure there's no bacteria left in the food. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, that's... Yes, you can tell I me mean, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm not, no, this no, is no, the no, chef. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, yeah. what it is, is, there, is the boards of health through, through different states have come up with, a, and the FDA has said, listen, we want you to cook chicken to 160 degrees. Now, if I cooked my barbecue chicken on a grill to 165 degrees, it would, <clears throat> it, it would be dry, it would be horrible if you did it at your house. That's recommended. I go to about 150, let it sit for a few minutes, and get it up to 160. So there's the other thing, too, is if you let food rest, you don't have to have it. Once you get to a certain temperature, it's going to continue to cook. So if you get it to 150, 145, 150, you can put it down, let it rest, you don't have to cover it in tin foil, but it will continue to cook in a pan. It doesn't have to be a heated pan. But if you took prime rib and cooked it to 160, it would be all completely well done. And there are people who like it well done. And that's where you get a prime rib where the ends are at 160, but you get to the center, you're more like 135, 140, even after resting. But you can always put food back in the oven to cook it a little bit more. Once you've cooked the temperature to 165, so just be aware of people's taste. You see signs all over the place. Um, uh, eating or consumption of raw food is, is really not recommended and yet you're taking your, <clears throat> your food into your, you know, into your <clears throat> hands, not ours. And yet we both have friends who eat it pretty much. Uh, oh my God, right I mean, yeah, exactly it's like, correct. I mean, what and then we have people who want it like shoe, like like my shoe. So it, it's it's everywhere you go, whether you're catering or you're sitting at the grill at, by the pool, Labor Day weekend, everybody has their way of. I don't like my chicken like that. I want my steak flipped over twice, three minutes. I'm like, yeah. Or Todd, I want thirty minutes on each side. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know? So. For a caterer, it's a little diff more difficult, but for a homeowner, too, you should be aware. You know, chicken should, when you cut it, it should be white on the inside, pork. If you see a lot of pink, you know it needs to go back on the grill if you don't have a thermostat. If you look at the steak and you cut it and it's not pink, it's red, you know it's not cooked. And again, I go back to that thing about common sense. If a little bit goes a long way when you're cooking. And you do a lot of cooking. I do. And, so, it, and it tastes great. I don't great. know. I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks for sending us a chat. Like I said, it's just a guide that they've come up with. So people yeah, so, who don't have any clue 
You know, some people are numbers people. They just want to see numbers and thermostats. And, and uh, we have mutual friends who, who try, uh, you know, prime ribs and, and uh, briskets and everything else. They try dry rubs and oils and this and that. And I tell everybody, do it at home and, and practice. Practice with a three-pound brisket, <clears throat> not an eight-pound brisket. Practice with a, a four-pound roast instead of a 16-pound a roast. Get it to where you like it and where your guests are going to like it, and you'll, you'll have great success. And that's why I'm coming over to your house more than you're coming <laughs> over to my house. <clears throat> All right. I do want to talk, I know, a little bit. We haven't really talked about the condiments, if there's any risk of ketchups and mustards out no, there. No, I think ketchups and mustards, barbecue sauces, again, leaving them in the hot sun for more than two hours is probably not. The, the, the ideal situation. The other thing is, is we talk about leftovers. You know, if you have a bottle of ketchup out for two hours in the direct sun, I, even though the label says, oh, it's good to February, I wouldn't put that back in the fridge. I'd throw that mustard relish and, and, and ketchup barbecue sauce right out. You know, you, you, there's no sense in, in getting anybody sick down the road. If you, again, <clears throat> It's out there for two hours or it's out there all day. Just, you don't need to keep it. It's a $3 loss. It's it's a, you know, exactly you correct. Know I mean, I mean it, for a barbecue, for right. you have 50 people, a $3 loss for three things is $9. Yeah. I, I, I hate to say throw $9 away to anybody <clears throat> because we all work hard for our money. But Well, is it worth not being exactly sick for a correct. couple days? Exactly correct. You know, and, that's, <clears throat> and, and no one knows if you're going to get sick, but the, the ketchup turns to vinegar. It doesn't taste good. The kids will know in a second. They'll put it on the chicken nuggets or the french fries. Dad, this is wrong. Yeah, we've all done it. Yeah. So there's a the thing. And then we, I just mentioned leftovers. You know, you have 50 people and only 40 show up. And you have 10 more chicken breasts. And you have 10 more hamburgers. You always want to give, you know, Winston and Millie, Aunt, uh, Uncle Winston, Aunt Millie, stuff to go home with. However... If that chicken's been out for an hour and they've got a half an hour, 45 minute ride home, probably not the best idea to send it home. At some point, again, common sense says, you know what? This has been out a while. We cooked it. You got a ride home. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, you know what, Uncle Winston? You know. And what if they stop for an ice cream? Exactly. It's another correct. half hour. Exactly correct. So people don't think about that. It, no, that's exactly right. And that's, again, I go back to simple, stupid, common sense. If, if they live across the street and they want to take a hamburger home that's been out for half an hour, no issue. They live across the street and it's been out for two, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the cleanup or even the prep, cross-contamination. Yeah, I mean. You know, you said something last night, and I'm going to let you say it, and I'm like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so when you're, when you're prepping out the chicken, you're prepping out eggs, you're prepping out, Potatoes, it's not so much the potatoes, they'll rinse off real quick. There'll be no issue 90% of the time. I mean, you, you, again, you got to wash. However, when you're doing chicken salad and you're doing egg salad right behind it, you want to get a new cutting board, set up a space so it's clean. It's got plenty of space for you to work at. You're going to chop up what you want to put in. Some people put relish in there in their egg salad. Some people put onions, some people scallions. What it is is they put into it, you want to make sure there's plenty of room, it's clean cutting board, and there's been nothing on it before without being thrown through a dishwasher or wash with bleach and stuff. <clears throat> so now I get all this stuff from my hands. What am I doing? You you wash your hands. I, I cater and my Dish hands. Dish towel? Nope. No, I would recommend. Rag. Nope. Uh, you go Paper to towel. the sink, you wash your hands, and you dry them with paper towels, and you throw the paper towel away, keeping a, a rag around your waist. It's a great idea. However, you, you, you're constantly touching it, then you're constantly working on something, then you're constantly touching it. Now you have a little bit of egg, you have a little bit of chicken, you have a little bit of beef. Now all of a sudden, that has a little bit of chicken, that has a little bit. So the best way to do it is not to carry the rag. Wash your hands, paper towels. I, I'm constantly in the sink. Constantly washing my hands. And, and as far as glove goes, it's very difficult to cut with gloves on your hands. You don't have the feel for the onions. You don't have the, I 
prep, very seldom without gloves. When I serve, I have gloves. It's tough to have people at a cookout wear gloves, but it, it really, it's amazing. But we could prep with gloves. You can, but with knives, when you're cutting and chopping, I wash my hands so much, I don't, don't do that. But So get rid of my rag over my shoulder. Yeah, like get rid of that. that no more of that. The apron that you wear around is to protect your clothes, not to dry your hands, not to touch a chicken, wipe your hands. It's to protect the clothes you're wearing. And that's, years ago, you'd see all these guys wiping their hands and this and that. And I, it's probably not the greatest, greatest uh, plan in the world. Well, I'm tired and hungry all at the same time right now after talking to you about all this. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> Talk about cleaning the tables, chairs, because a lot of us store our stuff in a barn or a shed. Yeah. Comes out. Yep. It, it, Any products you recommend or just yeah, a basic? I, I, you know, the day before, a bleach product. I use X14. You spray down the chairs. You spray down... Tables, you want to make sure everything's clean around it. There's no spider webs or anything. Again, common sense. Clean the grill. I turn it on. I use the potato now. I, I've watched it on YouTube. Use you, the potato. You, you take a potato, you cut it in half, and you scrub the grill with a potato with, on, on, on warm, and it gets all the stuff off. It, it's amazing. I don't know how it does it. don't know why it does it, but really? it does it, and it works terrific. Now I know what my wife's going to make me do tonight when I go home. <laughs> she, <laughs> well, she's looking over there. years ago, they were talking about the bristles. And so the bristles, we get down into the flame, you turn the flame on, yeah. and, the, and the grease is spitting up, and now you have those little bristles off, yeah. the, off the brush coming up. And, and I can tell you I've cooked a long time. I, 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 I like we to both think have. That, yeah. I'd like to think that little bristles have ever gotten into someone, but now the potato, and you just scrub it on, a, on, a, mm. on, on, on warm, on low, it cleans the grill, terrific, no issues, good to go. Wow. Yeah, a little thing. Any it. spray or just just a uh, potato? Just a potato. No, nope, no spray. You you know. You've never I, told me this in all I, the time. I, 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 you got you, can't give you everything. Well, you're giving me all these secrets. You keep it from me. All right, that's so fine. So when you put down, you you clean the grill. You put down chicken or steak, or a hamburger, hot dogs maybe not so much, but chicken, fish, steak, hamburgers. You want to let that side cook. You want to see blood or you want to see water coming through, moisture coming through the side of the chicken, fish, steak, hamburger, so that you know to flip it. If, a lot of people have a tendency to throw it on the grill and then try to flip it 30 seconds later. That's a huge mistake. Clean grill, put the food down, you don't have to flame throw it. You'll see when it begins to sweat a little bit and you can flip it and then if you want to flip it back over and add a piece of cheese to it, that's fine. But don't flip it till it sweats. And you should be no issues. All right. Flip it when it sweats and use a potato or clean it up after. And At, clean up right before is, I cook. Right after you cook, you'll have no issues. Life is good. All right. Well, normally, we're getting down to the end. I do a tip of the day for my viewers. But you're here. And unfortunately, Thanksgiving is going to come sooner than we think. Run me through, I go to the store, I buy my Thanksgiving turkey. I come home, I cut it open, and that's where you come in. Okay. Tell, me what, tell me what to do, what not to do in the prep and the, and the cooking. First off, most turkeys are frozen. Yes. So what you wanna do is, is bring the turkey home and let it thaw. So if you get it on a Wednesday or you get it on Tuesday, let it thaw Wednesday before you put it in the oven on Thursday. A lot of people try to wash the turkeys. Do not wash turkeys. Water sprays on the countertops, water sprays on you. If there is a, not that there'd be contamination, but if there's something uncooked and it sprays, it's there. Take a rag, damp, pat it, take paper towels, pat it, inside out, throw the rags or throw the paper towels away throw the rag right into the laundry, and done. You want the turkey to be somewhat dry. A lot of people stuff the turkeys. There are people that say, never stuff a turkey. Well, I, we're gonna stuff a turkey. Right, so what, okay. what I do is instead of jam packing the turkey, make sure when you 
put the stuffing into the bird, <clears throat> that you leave rooms, leave room for your hands. And when you do that, you're not insulating the bird. So the bird will cook entirely through. When the popper comes off, you know the bird's done, you pull that out. When that comes out, you can take the stuffing that's in the bird, pull it right out of the bird, put it into some stuff that's a little drier on your cooktop, and you'll have great stuffing. It's, again, because I always wash it. I always have the... the, the I, I've, uh, I've washed it, and, and for years, the sink going I got to tell you... And the spray thing going all over it. And it just and goes everywhere, and you done. don't think anything yeah. about it. And then two weeks later, you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're not feeling good. And you're like, what What just happened? So Because we're not disinfecting the counters. You're not disinfecting right the counters, the walls, this. You might have it on your apron. Now you put your apron on a week later because you didn't wash your apron, and, and you're, you're covered in it. So yeah. recommendation is... Do not wash the bird. Okay. I know people sit there and say, no, I got it. No. Um, and don't overstuff it. And do not overstuff it because. So it, leave it, room with your hand around right. it. Right. You got big paws. Well, obviously, you don't have to. You just leave room so that the, there's, the bird isn't insulated in the inside so that it cooks entirely through. And you'll have a great th Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner. And uh, that should take care of everything. That would be it. That would be it. All right. Well, thank you. That was a ton of information. No, I think that Just was so it. much. And uh, thanks for coming in. No, thank you for having me. I, I, I got to tell you, I was a little, little, little nervous coming in talking about food. No, was, you said, you said it'd be chef. half an hour, yeah. and here it is. And you're a chef. How can you worry about talking food? This is your business. Yeah, but so. it's, I, I, don't, I don't talk. I just do. So it's, it's been mm. terrific. I want to thank everyone from, from Beverly here to... to, to Making me feel very warm and comfortable, and, and Mike, as always, thank you very much. My pleasure. Todd from Kettle Cove Catering, Manchester by the Sea. We'll put his number up uh, by the time you see this. Well, thanks again. Uh, of course, I want to thank Chris Harvey and Michelle Lopez for all they do for me here, and uh, my beautiful wife, who actually got the food for us and uh, did some prep work and has always been a big supporter. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.